Hello and uh, welcome to Success Synergy show. This is a show where we discuss a lot of topics which are extremely relevant to today's changing world. We have a lot of learning while having a lot of fun. And today I have a very special guest here. He is Mr. Matt State from Britain. Uh, is that right, uh, Matt? We've just met a few. Yeah, hi, yeah, yeah. All right. So, yes, yes, Matt is the top TikTok expert from UK. And uh, a friend introduced me to him just a while back. And, uh, you know, up until now, I have been always very overwhelmed with TikTok. I won't say it was good or bad or anything, but it was like a very overwhelming feeling whenever I went to TikTok because uh, all I saw was a lot of uh, stuff which was totally irrelevant and not pertinent to my sensibilities at all. But then when I met Matt, he told me about how to build a brand on TikTok. And that was what was extremely captivating to me, extremely fascinating to me. In fact, uh, Matt is a martial arts expert and he has built a big brand, which he will talk about in a few minutes. Matt, uh, there, uh, I would just want to narrate a little incident that just happened yesterday. I was invited to address the MBA students of Lucknow University, Lucknow being the city where I am in India, and it's a big city, it's a capital city, so it's the MBA uh, department invited me to just address the students over there. And uh, uh, the topic I asked them to pick up from my website, and they said online money making is very interesting to me, to us, so I was just going in for online money making. Uh, lecturing them and giving them a lot of tools and techniques and things like that and then i told them about this live show that we're going to have today and the first reaction that i got was a lot of giggling and smoking you know which i could understand see after meeting you i have also started studying tiktok in my own way and i've had close to 10 years of business coaching experience so i can see what you are seeing but for the benefit of uh, our audience, first of all, just tell us why TikTok has acquired this kind of, uh, you know, uh, feeling or a little bit of um, apprehension. What may be the reasoning behind this? Uh, okay, well, there's, um, there's, there's lots of separate questions within that question. Yes. So, uh, I think uh, the easiest thing to do is just give a really quick overview of what TikTok is for people. Um, okay. So essentially, it's a short form video platform. It was uh, it, it was basically brought together by uh, by dance who bought musically, and so essentially it started out as dancing, lip syncing, all that kind of thing. It's now grown into something much more than that, but a lot of people still think that's where it is, and so that's where a lot of the confusion lies. Okay. Whereas in actual fact now. There's all kinds of really, really interesting stuff going on um, that's just underneath the surface. The trick is, is to be able to get underneath the surface. So uh, if you're a, a young person uh, that is talking with other young people, this is a natural platform because you're already in that kind of space and you're already geared for that short form, very fast paced energy. Whereas for people like myself, who are obviously a little bit older, uh, we have to understand why that is and why it suits so well into the current situation. So from a business point of view, the very simplistic answer is if you have any kind of customer base that is under the age of 35, then it's a platform you should be looking at because that's where your customer base are hanging out. And that's really one of the fundamental reasons. It's a great way to introduce yourself to your marketplace, to your clients, to your customers. That's a fantastic answer. I think uh, you've just submitted the whole thing very, very neatly. See, uh, most of the people uh, have an apprehension about TikTok, and there are several apprehensions. We'll talk about it a little later. But let's first talk about building a brand. Now, uh, TikTok uses short videos, which are, you know, facilitated with a lot of background music and lip syncing and all those things. Are there any special tools to uh, create those kind of videos? I particularly saw one video on uh, your profile. Uh, yours is a modern samurai, right? Uh, yes, yes. Modern, modern samurai MA. Mine is, yeah, modern samurai MA. 
Okay, so that uh, I actually could not find it while I was trying to look for you by your name on TikTok. But that could be a major uh, reason why a lot of people just get put off from uh, TikTok even before they actually start. Somebody like me who would not want to spend hours and hours looking for a person and not being able to find them until and unless the handle is actually given to them and you go straight looking for that. Yeah, yeah. It, it, so it basically boils down to how you want to brand yourself. So is your branding going to be you as an individual? Is it going to be you as an organization? Is it going to be your company? So how basically it boils down to how you're going to brand yourself. So my branding is my uh, one of my things that I do, which is modern samurai. So my full-time martial arts gym is called Modern Samurai Martial Arts. My online courses and things is called Modern Samurai Online. Uh, one of my books is called Modern Samurai. So that's my brand, if you like. And so people know in the UK and uh, and, and sort of the US and around Europe, and so they know that if they want to look for me, then what they're actually doing is looking for my brand because they are one and the same. So that's that's why it's under the, the handle Modern Samurai. So if you wanted to promote your business, then you would more than likely use your business persona and your business name in your bio and as your uh, profile name. Okay, so uh, just finding somebody using their own name is not really a possibility on TikTok. As I say, it depends on how they present themselves. So okay. your, your, your bio is essentially your shop window in the same way that it would be on Facebook or LinkedIn or any of the other platforms. And so that's your opportunity to be searchable, um, to, to, to state very clearly what it is that you do and to start attracting people towards you. So as an example of that, um, I have my name, which is Modern Samurai. That's how people know me. Underneath that, I have uh, an allowance of 80 characters. And so what I've done there in my bio is I put self-defense made simple because it's just that's what I do. I teach self-defense. I put it away with accessible for everyone. It does exactly says right so there's, there's right. no um but it also means that it's it's searchable google google can recognize and search it so it ranks and it also works as a library um, and a collation method within the platform so if you think about what it is it's essentially a very fast-paced youtube so we all understand youtube and how that works we make videos they go onto our profile they're searchable and people can access them yeah, by looking for the right things. Right. TikTok is exactly the same, just much, much faster. It is very fast, actually. Mm. It is. And uh, tell me one more thing. I saw one video which was very fascinating on your profile, wherein you are going live, and that is an announcement, and there are five of you. Uh, yes. And you're saying one of me is going to go live at this, this, this time. Entertainment seems to be something which is inbuilt in TikTok. Is it necessary to have entertainment inbuilt in TikTok? Mm. All of the all of the TikTok videos. Uh, yeah, again, you have to understand the platform and what it does, and so you present in that particular way. So, if I were if if I were presenting my information through YouTube. Then I would do it differently. If I was presenting through LinkedIn again, I would do it differently. They all have a different way of doing it. So, as an example of that, we we all know that if you're going to make uh, LinkedIn videos, then really you want to make sure that there is text of what's being said because the majority of people watch with the sound off. Okay, so we understand that. So, if we look at TikTok, we've got to understand what it is. So, essentially, you get presented with a thing called the For You page. Now, that is just a random set of different short videos until you until you manage to train it to do what you want. It just feeds you what it, what it thinks you might like. Right. And so what happens is you just scroll through. But you scroll like this really quickly. So your okay. job, your number one job is to stop me doing this. So the very first thing that needs to happen is I have to grab the attention of the viewer and make them stop scrolling. Once right. I've done that, then I have to hold their attention, all right? And that's the game. Uh, that's the that you know that's the nature of what we're doing. Right. So right. if if you imagine a child in a sweet shop, and they they open the door and they're suddenly surrounded by thousands of different coloured sweets, you know, 
one of them will draw their eye and they will be attracted to one probably the shiniest and the most brightest and you can right. you, you can almost say the same sort of thing so it has to be something that draws the attention that makes them want to stop and watch what they're doing so that's that's why it needs to have a certain amount of not not necessarily just entertainment you don't you don't have to be stupid constantly and you don't have to be stupid at all if you don't need you know you don't have to no. be um, no. it does have to be engaging that's the thing yes so uh, this is what I learned from uh, going through your TikTok videos because initially my impression was totally, totally different. And uh, after after meeting you and after studying uh, a little bit of uh, your uh, brand as such, I started seeing the engagement factor. And uh, today you had put up a post on LinkedIn which uh, describes the different percentages. The, the segmentation of how many people are actually looking for different stuff on TikTok. Yes. Uh, yes. So uh, tell us a little bit more about that because that is the data which I think every marketer who is yeah. attempting to build a brand is very easy. Yeah. Well, well basically, uh, I mean, I think it might be worth saying uh, what what my sort of numbers are and how that looks because it makes more sense then. So. Um, basically long story short i've got um, over 215,000 followers i i get watches in the in a million and a half a week regularly um, my highest video watch is for 4.2 million now something like that so essentially i get an awful lot of uh, an awful lot of eyes on that are watching me and what i do and, I, and i've got a good community now what's interesting is yeah the, the linkedin profile picture the, the thing that i put up on linkedin was showing very clearly that the platform is the same, right? A human interaction is the same. Human wants and needs are the same. Uh, it's just a slightly different way of transferring that that message. So, when we looked at um, <clears throat> when we look at requirements of the human, there's health, wealth, and happiness. Yeah, everyone yes. sort of most people are aware of health, wealth, and happiness. And so, if we look at that and we say, right, okay, now you can break down every single business, every single service, every single product can fall into one of those categories somewhere right. from, a, you know, from a broad stroke, but it comes into that, right? And so if we look at health, wealth and happiness, and then we translate that into the platform TikTok, and we do a hashtag search on things in and around that, what you actually find is if you search the hashtag money, then that's several billion, several billion people yes. are yes. searching for money. If you put in personal finance, that's something like 280 odd million. And so, you know, hundreds of millions of people are searching for finance, for money. If you put in health, again, it's in the billions. Um, fun was something like 90 billion. It was a ridiculous number. And so nature was 9 billion, I think. Art was 7 point something billion. The point, the point being that whatever it is that you're, that you're into, whatever it is that A, you like, you know whether that be science art what have you whether that whatever your product is whether that be uh financial services or you're an artist or a musician or you sell life insurance i mean it really doesn't matter there is a niche within the platform and there are people looking specifically for that kind of content it's just knowing how to search it yes and searching is a little difficult at least this is what i have found so tell us a little bit more about how to go about searching for the right kind of stuff on TikTok as such. Well, the, <clears throat> there's a thing called hashtags, which is uh, basically we all we all mostly got that idea with hashtags from LinkedIn and stuff like that. So we we get the concept that they're a a signpost towards what the content is, hmm. and so. There are two main types of hashtags with regards to TikTok. One is really helpful because what it does is it actually tells you what's popular, it tells you what's trending, it tells you what people are looking for. And so it will, it will give you that information so you can make contact in and around that. And the second thing is you can use hashtags to actually pinpoint your content and what it is and what it does. So say for example, you, were, uh, you decided to do a video on boiling an egg, just for the sake of picking something. And if you then put the hashtag sort of for new page, um, random kitchen stuff, then nobody really know what that was. Right. And that's where that's where understanding how the hashtag works is more is much more of a, 
um, an interesting thing because if you put on there as an example say cooking which would be one of the overarching hashtags that's a big one and then you put on there you know egg boiling and, and basically hashtagged it down you know quick meals five minute dinners those sorts of things right then, then the then the right people would be able to access it and so not only would you then be able to find the right content that you want to look for because if he was looking for that specifically you could put in there cooking five minute meal and it will give you videos in and around that content. Yes. If you yes. were promoting your content, then you would hashtag it that way so that the people you were looking for could find it. Uh, see, I understand how hashtags are, are hmm. really work, and uh, but this is also for the understanding of other people who are watching the show and who will watch it at a later stage. See, uh, we are presently creating valuable content. All of us are indulging in creating great content uh, as as far as our abilities go tell me what attracted you to tiktok and when did you start building your brand on tiktok how long did it take for you well, to get from there to here that's what i'm yeah, trying to yeah. well, the the um the, the the story started on one of those late night couldn't sleep moments uh, we all have them sometimes, you know, and we've got busy lives, lots going on, and sometimes your brain just won't switch off. So I was in one of those situations. It was uh, the small hours of the morning, and I ended up watching an interview with Gary Vaynerchuk. Now, some people like Gary Vaynerchuk, other people think not he's so great. He's but, absolutely uh, great. Like him or hate him or whatever, but you can't ignore him. <laughs> no, exactly that. You can't ignore him. Yeah. So he was actually talking about TikTok. And talking about the the very real possibilities of what TikTok not only is but what can become, and so my little brain at three o'clock in the morning went, I'm going to have a proper look at that. Um, okay. And then I actually went on a business podcast a couple of days later, where again we we discussed the fact that I I listened to this interview, uh, and that's when I said I'm going to really look into this and I'm really going to have a proper look and see what it is. Um, and so I started that process then. And so I spent a good few months really looking into what TikTok is, how it works, how the algorithms work, what all the different things do, the functionality of it, the type of audiences, how to understand, how to reach the different types of audiences, and so all of that sort of stuff. And then I started playing with it and started building some of my own, uh, my own uh, profiles. But then I started uh, engaging them with clients as well and helping them to do the same using the same strategies. And so there's an actual formula that you can follow uh, to help you know to help you to grow on that platform just like anything else and so over the past sort of uh what eight nine months now what, what we've been doing is honing that sort of pathway and honing that uh, that understanding of how to do it because and this is where this is important okay i am not a 20 year old good looking person i'm actually a middle-aged guy that looks better with my clothes on than off so you know so i have to offer something else my value has to be yes more than that and so if i was a 20 year old that was attractive then you know gain, gaining a large following would wouldn't wouldn't be hard to it would be difficult to replicate because unless you were the same you wouldn't be able to do it but because we've done it on a value proposition i i give you something i you know, I give you a reason to watch. I give you a reason to stay involved. I give you a reason to be part of my community. Then that can be translated into just about any medium you like, regardless of what profession you're in. Right, right. So this this value proposition that uh, is so very strongly attached with building a brand mm -hmm. is uh, the most important thing. But uh, you know, for for young people, just to pick up a phone and start shooting a TikTok video or doing something silly uh, is very easy, but there is no value proposition attached. And most of uh, most of the TikTok videos, sorry to say mm -hmm. this, uh, but I don't see much of value proposition attached there. Okay. And, uh, and building a brand is a different ball game altogether. So how do you incorporate that, uh, that value proposition every time and still gain so much of followers? I, I'm, I'm going to ask you a slightly challenging question. I hope you don't mind. <laughs> yeah, not at all. Did, do, please, please. do you like art? Oh, I love art. Absolutely. Do you like music? 
Oh, absolutely. What actual value do they bring to the world? Uh, just repeat yourself a little bit, please. What actual value does that bring to the world? So if we took art... Lots of, and lots of, lots of value, I think. Lots and lots of value. Okay, so my, my, my response to that is, number one, one of, the main, one of the main values of a really nice piece of art is that it, it just makes the world a better place. It makes, yes. you know, and, yes. and it makes you feel better about the world and it raises your spirits, it, you know, creates good emotions. It does all of these wonderful things. Now, a TikTok viral video essentially is a piece of modern art, whether we understand the medium or not. Right. Okay. Essentially, it's art for the modern day. So it doesn't have to have any other purpose in that world than to create joy. I mean, that's, that's part of actually the mission statement of TikTok itself. It actually has in its mission statement the words creativity and joy. So it doesn't have to have any reason to exist in the world other than it makes people happy. Um, whereas for us- that makes, that makes a lot of sense to me. That makes a great lot yeah, of sense. Yeah, thank, you, thank, you, thank you for your question. Now you have put the last piece of puzzle in place completely. <laughs> yeah. Well, there are, as, as we know, there are people in the world whose sole job is to make people happy, make people laugh, entertain people, and they and they make vast amounts of money from that. And there's a, you know, that's a huge commodity in itself. Um, yes. One of the things that we misunderstand, and, and I was really guilty of this at the beginning, and I and I hold my hands up and say this. Um, again, coming from a certain sort of age. I misunderstood how clever some of these guys are. It might look silly, but the editing that they're doing, the, 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 the technology they're using, the ideas they're generating, and just the sheer hard work that they're phenomenal. doing. Phenomenal. They are phenomenal. Many of them are absolutely phenomenal. Yeah, yeah, yes. The hard work that goes into some of those videos, it's just incredible. Yes. There's, uh, as an example of that, there's one at the moment that was trending a few days ago where people would... Uh, it would just be a succession of like clothes changes hmm. but yes but if you think about how long that would take you to put on 50 different outfits and, and stand in exactly the same place and perform the same movement and monitor all that measure all of that and then do that and then filter that down into a 15 second clip you know that's that, that's not oh a that's much. sheer sheer hard work monumental yeah. amount of hard work in fact, uh, in my yesterday's talk with these MBA students, uh, one uh, girl asked me, she is already running an online store for clothes and uh, they are a special type of embroidery which is done only in the city where I am in Lucknow. It's called chicken embroidery and that's mm -hmm. a very exquisite hand uh, embroidered uh, thing which uh, they generate and uh, she has an online store and I told her, instinctively I told her, go on TikTok. And that's how I brought this episode up at that point in time. And yeah. this particular video, I just had a faint um, remembrance of it, what you're talking about, but I have seen this video. And it's, it must have taken a monumental amount of work to actually get it done. Yeah. Tell me... Uh, so, so yeah. can I ask, what, what's that particular young lady's name? Uh, she is uh, Divyanshi or some, somebody. Okay. I don't know. Well, um, that's why. So, so basically, for that particular young lady, and, and it, it, I hope she's watching. If she's not, um, then this would be a benefit to just for anybody anyway. Now, if we take that particular young lady and we say that she does something very, very specific to an area that's very talented, now that would be a fantastic way to promote content. But not only that, that can then be sold out through online platforms to a world stage. The facility okay. is there to put live links into the bio to a shop directly into a bio. And she okay. can use that as a platform to sell globally if she felt the need. So you know, it's it's very powerful. Okay, great, great. I think that's that's a phenomenal piece of advice. And uh, uh, Matt, tell me, my next question is: Are there some special softwares available to shoot those special videos? They they are they are so different. You know, I've seen fantastic videos on YouTube also, and on Vimeo and other platforms also. But mm -hmm. TikTok videos have a different. Uh, flavor to them. Are there yes. any special softwares uh, through which the editing is done, or uh, how, how are they being created? Yeah, well, the the main thing is that TikTok is a doing app, um, and TikTok itself has an awful lot of 
things within it that you can use. So it's got it's got its own editing software. It's got its own filters. It's got its own okay. um, lots of different things you can do within the app itself. And so you can spend hours having fun with that. And they change quite quickly as well. So they update those quite a lot. So when I um when you mentioned the one I did yesterday with uh, five faces, mm. that was that was directly from the app. Uh, that's just a little button you press, and it allows you to do that. And so there's loads of great stuff like that. You can put green screens, you can put things up behind you, you can change your voice, you can, um, there's a whole load of things and it's fun. I mean, we keep coming back to the word fun. All of those things are within the app itself, uh, mm -hmm. but you can use outside software and then upload that into the platform as a finished video. So you've got both of those options to do that with. Okay, I'll just open the app right in front of me and tell mm -hmm. me where exactly to locate all of these things. Okay, well, if you, uh, yes. so you have the app in front of you. Yes, if you have it uh, open, I've, I've opened it. Uh, there should be a big red button at the bottom of your screen. See, right now I'm just, the moment I open it, there's some video popping up. Yeah, you'll have, yeah, you'll have, you'll have craziness, right? So that's your <laughs> for you page, which as I said, you need to really train that to do certain things, right? Okay, so I, I just have to keep scrolling up. This is so what you told me. Bottom corner, you'll have a little uh, where it says me, and that should bring up your profile. Yes. Okay. Now, if you you should have a, a dark circle with a plus in the middle at the bottom. Yes. Yes. Press that. Okay. Now you see a big red dot. Yes. Yes. The one side of that, you should see a little pink face, smiley face, where it says effects. Yes. Okay. Yes. If you press the effects button. Mm -hmm. All right, now you should have trending and it should give you all different little squares. Yes. Right, now I'm not sure what yours does, but if you scroll down, you should be able to see one with somebody in a pair of glasses. Yes. All right, so if you press that, mm -hmm. that should give you a certain type of effect right and that should be represented on your screen i'm having fun with this but i'll have to spend us more time on this <laughs> all right so basically this is uh, interesting glasses yes yeah so if you scroll down what you should see there should be a, a gentleman with dark sunglasses on and a goatee beard with a blue background if you go down on the trending one, it should be uh, online. It's about five down. I mean, this isn't great for the viewers, but it shows you what I mean. Okay. And if you press that, it should be highlighted in a red circle goes around it. And then on the screen, on your picture, you should have, you should now have a goatee beard and a pair of sunglasses. Yes. All right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's that's great fun. <laughs> real shame, it's a real shame you can't screen share that at the moment. All right, that, that, that's wonderful. <laughs> that, uh, thanks for teaching me this right here. <laughs> there you go. Um, but that's that's just one example of, uh, of uh, it does loads of really, really clever things. And so as an example of that, if we want to take that back to a very professional sort of viewpoint. Now, what I can do, and one of the things that's really good for that is very, very quickly, I can put a video or photographs on a green screen behind me. So if I was delivering a presentation on something important, or if I was trying to get across a piece of information, I could put a chart up behind me. I could actually show a video of a specific thing. So if I was talking about, uh, as an example, the uh, embroidery we talked about earlier, I could be running a video behind me of a particular point of that, and I could be then explaining what was happening, and why that was important. Um, so I can use it for presentation things in presentation style, just as much as I could use it to have some fun and give myself, you know, glasses or a or big horns or something like that. Yes, it is. It is actually now I am understanding it thoroughly. Mm. Uh, anyway, before when I ex explored it, it was up to a certain extent only. The hesitation was, I, I think, my own hesitation was there to uh, that was stopping me more than anything else. And uh, Matt, we are having a comment coming from Devina Jaffa. She's saying, true, TikTok serves as a good marketing drought. Fantastic. Thank, thank you, Devina, Devina, for finding value. What we are discussing, and we are having a lot of fun over here. Because I am having a lot of fun with the UK's top TikToker. 
that's that's uh, wonderful uh, see uh, Matt, uh, now that you've told me that uh, right in the app itself there are a lot of uh, inbuilt effects which can be used uh, and other editing software there are so many of them available i generally use uh, textsmith's uh, camtasia but uh, are there some easy to use softwares which you can tell us the editing software which the people are shooting on their webcams or something they can just utilize it there? yeah there's, there's there's obviously there's all kinds of different free software now that people can get i'm not sure whether you guys have that where you are but i use uh, a one called InShot, which is a an iPhone. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's that. That I find really, really useful for doing the quick TikToks. Um, okay. It's an easy access. It's free, and there's a number of different ones that you can use that are similar. So there's no there's no need to go out and spend a fortune on on editing software and things like that. Not for this. Not, not unless you really want to. That's one of the really great things about this is there's a low barrier to entry, as in you, know, you, you and I can do this right now from our phones with no yeah. extra anything. And uh, number two, at the moment, the platform is content hungry. So what I mean by that is if you look at something like YouTube, at the moment, what they say is that every minute of every day, two weeks worth of content is being uploaded to YouTube. So you would have to stay awake day and night for two weeks to consume one minute's worth of uploads. Whereas on TikTok at the moment, it's still heavily biased towards uh, creators because there's not enough content out there there's far more consumers than there are creators and so okay. it's a great opportunity to get out and get your stuff out there and they will share it for you so as long as it's interesting it brings us back to that's that a, interesting yeah that's that's extremely interesting mm -hmm. and uh, uh matt you have come out come up with a book please tell us a little bit about your book which is uh, going to be launched soon yeah, oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah. The book, um, the latest one, I've done a couple. The latest one actually went live uh, literally an hour or two ago. And that is exploring the concept of online martial arts and how that works in the modern world. So uh, it, it could relate to just about any subject, really, but I'm looking at martial arts because that's what I do. And so we're looking at the, the how the world is changing because we're now gaining information in a completely different way. So most of our knowledge now. Um, comes from online sources. Most of our social stuff now, or a lot of it, is done through online mediums. A lot of our learning is now done more and more through online platforms. As an example, we're you know we're having this conversation today. If we think yes. back 20 years, this just wasn't a viable thing That's to happen. Right. You know, a a call across the world was an was a genuine event. You know, the whole family would gather around the phone and and we'd shout at one another. You know. Um, <laughs> And yes. that's, yeah, you know, you and I, you, you and I understand that the world has come through this journey, and we're now at this point where technology has moved along so so fast that it has now changed the landscape on how we absorb information, how we learn, what we learn as well. Because again, talking about the telephone, um, as a as a as a kid, I remembered numbers yes. because I had to, whereas now they're all stored in my device. Um, so I can still ring somebody, but could I ring somebody if I didn't have that device to hand? I mean, and that's one of the things that we talk about. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, so it's an exploration into both the good and the bad of online learning and what that, you know, what that is going to look like for us both now today and moving forward in the future and the repercussions of that. So, um, so yeah, so I think it's interesting anyway. Yes, of course it is. It is. And tell us about your previous books. Um, yeah, so I, essentially, I used to work as a bouncer and a bodyguard. So what that means is I was uh, one of those people that was in charge of looking after busy nightclubs and dealing with nightlife and things like that. So um, part of my, my job role was the nightclubs and it was also looking after people, some famous people, celebrities, that sort of stuff. So I was in and around that world for a number of years. And then I went into teaching those guys, and so I taught a lot of security for years. And so my first book was essentially about that and the stories about that, because lots of people used to ask me all the time, um, you know, what was it like? Uh, how did it feel? You know, what was what was what was going on there? Is it really like that? You know, a lot of time that's the sort of question you get a lot. So I thought I'd just write a book about it. People seemed interesting, and that and that went really well. That actually became a bestseller. 
Um, it hit number one twice in, on Amazon, and, and it was really, really popular. Um, and then, so that was like, well, okay, great, I'm going to write some more, which is which is what I did. So I then went on and, and wrote some others, um, and that brings us to say where we are today. So I, I, I thoroughly enjoy writing, by the way. I find it a great, uh, a great therapeutic exercise for me, and it keeps me still for five minutes, which is marvelous. I need that. <laughs> See, see, that's 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 really wonderful. And uh, writing a book or getting a book out is definitely a great uh, strategy when it comes to building a brand, when, especially okay. when you're trying to build a personal brand. Now all of these tools are available to us, but a book is like absolutely eternal. It's it's gonna stay definitely. In fact, today only I was uh, looking at some of the LinkedIn posts and I found somebody talking about online tutorials. Mm -hmm. And uh, we are coming up with a website uh, very soon. It's already ready. It's a big marketplace where online tutorials and audiobooks are going to be sold. So uh, online tutorials are definitely uh, there. Uh, a new tool, it's not really new, but it's, it's a great way to put your knowledge out to the market field, definitely. So uh, my question, which I've been thinking about after reading the title of your uh, latest book, which is coming up soon, is uh, about high contact professions. Your profession is particularly a high contact profession as such when you are teaching somebody martial arts. Mm -hmm. uh, you generally want the person to be in front of you. But now that this pandemic situation is going to be there, that's what the prediction is that at least for one more year we are probably going to be a little fearful of uh, interacting personally with others. And uh, social distancing is going to be a norm. Uh, tell us about what you think will happen to other high contact professionals. Because see, a lot of people come up and ask me about sales being a high contact prof profession. And I don't think that's really accurate because I've been uh, talking to people and doing pretty well using just the online interface. And a lot of it is selling. In fact, selling is there everywhere. I mean, we can't avoid selling at all. If we have to be in a business, selling cannot be avoided. But in high contact professions, how are they going to scale up in the times to come? Well, I, again, yeah, it's that, one of the reasons for writing the book was exactly that particular question. and. Um, you know how is it going to affect how we're going to how we're going to manipulate what we do to fit the new parameters? Because um, if we're talking sales as an example, if I'm having a conversation with you, then I can't necessarily use all of the tools in my arsenal because some of those aren't available to me. But what I do have to do is learn some new skills because this is a different way of communicating, and so I have to basically understand that and change what I do that a little bit to to best suit the medium. And again, we're back to different platforms. But when it comes to you know, physical contact and things and, and teaching a physical skill, then that does become slightly more challenging because without having that contact, you do miss a large portion of, of, of what you're trying to transfer knowledge wise. So all you can really do is focus and highlight the things you can work on. So in my medium, that would be, uh, as an example, you can work on footwork, you can work on movement, you can work on combinations, you can work on, um, you know, striking kind of stuff. So you can hit a bag, you can skip rope, you can do fitness stuff, you can, you know, there's all of those things that you can do, but what you can't do at this point in time is, you know, is, is physically grab hold of somebody right. and, and, and learn that side of things. So. Um, so in essence, all we can do really is, is highlight what we are capable of doing and, and, and either manipulate some of the elements of what we can't do so that we can at least do that um, and then just sort of wait for however yes. the world will or, write, or, write, or write a book and create a tutorial and just diversify your income stream by building TikTok videos, you, you never know. I mean, those those kind of things are also a possibility oh, yeah. of <laughs> using the knowledge to spread out onto different platforms and start teaching that in different ways. That's that's a great opportunity, I feel, available to everybody who is sitting on a bunch of any kind of knowledge. Yeah, oh, absolutely, yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm fortunate in the sense that 
I've been delivering online courses for years and I have online courses out in the marketplace and they've been out for years. Um, so I'm already in that space and been doing that. So I, I'm not in a position where I suddenly had to jump into something unfamiliar and start making uh, and start trying to present products that I maybe wasn't delivering at the best of my capabilities, you know, because it was such a massively steep learning curve for people. Um, so I was fortunate enough to, you know, to already have those things in place. But now we're settling into a into a new world where we're all learning so many things so quickly. So many things. Technology and yeah. the the amount of people now that understand how Zoom works, what Zoom is, uh, Facebook Lives, all of these great tools that we 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 had dormant before. They were always there and available to us. They were just underused. And yes, so they were underused. Absolutely, they were underused. Now uh, they are being used properly as they are the yeah. best option available to yeah. you. Yeah. And whatever, whatever the world look like, looks like at the other end of all of this, this is information, this is knowledge, this is opportunity that we're not just going to say, oh, well, that's it, it's done now. You know, this will carry forward into whatever else. Absolutely. Like. So, Absolutely. Um, so it's, you know, it's, it's to our advantage to sort of master how all this works. Fantastic. Uh, now, tell me a little bit about TikTok monetization. I know YouTube has a certain monetization plan. Does TikTok also have a monetization plan? Yeah, yeah. TikTok is in the final beta stages of, uh, of, of ads themselves. So when you look at the platforms historically, YouTube, uh, Instagram, Facebook, they all monetized within, uh, within the end of year three, early year four. So we're just coming into year four with TikTok. And so there's a good chance that that's going to be happening very soon. I can't say categorically yes or no because I don't have. No. Uh, yeah. Don't, however, when you look at all the signs and when you listen to the people that do sort of know of it, um, their ads are in beta test at the moment, so they're by invite only. So you can advertise on the platform, but there's quite a high barrier onto that for now. There's being uh, shops being rolled out. There's all sorts of really good stuff being tested at the moment that's going to come from four. And so when we look at what the future holds, that's a really great opportunity for people right there with what's going to be available. So for now, you've got the ads. There's a lot of influencer marketing going on. So, uh, you know, if, if somebody is, has a really large following, you can leverage that. You can ask them to promote your product or service. You can become them yourself. And they, you know, they, they ask for quite a lot of money, some of these guys. Some of the top influencers, they're demanding, <coughs> excuse me, quite a substantial amount of, a remuneration for that to happen so there's a lot of money at stake there's a lot of money at play they also have their own monetary system they have their own currency within tiktok and again you're you're um you're probably going to look, look at this a bit strange because i know i did when i first found out about it they they they're, they're called things like love banks uh and, and a puke and things like that so they've got these really silly names but they're they're amounts of currency now you can collect those as gifts when you go live and you can actually cash those out for real money. The split at the moment is heavily in TikTok's favor. I wouldn't actually recommend it because the uh, the percentage share is, is not very good at all. However, it is an option and some people are using that. So, uh, so yeah, they have their own currency. The in-app spending has gone up 276% in the past year. So there's, well, there's, there's a lot of money changing okay. hands within the platform. So right now is the time to build the community and see where it takes off and how it takes off and what happens later on so yeah, presently yeah. is the right time to build a great community on tiktok okay. yeah there are there are two main things i say about that and, and one of them is a little bit combative but i need it to be because what i tend to find is people have two questions for me um and the first one is isn't it just for kids twerking and the second one is is we can't make any money from it and so <clears throat> that's the question that I get a little bit combative about it because I actually say to people, well, actually, you're wrong. There are loads and loads of 14, 15, 16 year old kids making vast amounts of money on the platform. Just because you don't know how to do it doesn't mean it can't be done. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> and that's a really valid point because there are kids that really, really well. And so there's, there's the element of us understanding that we have to change our systems. You know, old fashioned sales don't work on the platform. That, that, that old fashioned structure just doesn't apply. So 
what we want to be doing is building a community, building relationship, building pipelines. And that's where the value is because we can map those over into other platforms or we can engage them to the point where they actually want to buy our services. Again, when you start breaking down the stats of, of, of you know, the customer pipelines and, and how far they need to be down that journey before they actually purchase, when you start looking at all of that, it's really interesting because it's in the 60, 70 percent of touch points. You know, they already are aware of you and what you do before they make a decision to purchase. And so TikTok takes you all the way down that pathway as well. Any decent social selling will do that. But on yes. the platform of TikTok for that particular medium, you know, it takes you down that journey. And so you're you're already you're already in a really solid relationship with your customer base. And that's that's got to be beneficial. You know, that's there's, the value of that is, you know, is very powerful. Definitely. Definitely. I understand. So uh, thank you so much, Matt. You shared so many brilliant points that if anybody goes through the recording of this also, they can pick up a lot of learning. And uh, well, uh, it, for, for a person like me who did not understand TikTok, you have made it crystal clear. And uh, well, I'll look into it as to how it can be definitely leveraged to create a better brand awareness. Thank you so much for being here. It's, it's no. been really lovely having you here. My pleasure. <laughs> thank you. Thank, thank you for all the people who watched this live and uh, we are going to watch it later on. And uh, we all thank you. Thank you a lot. Right. Thank you, guys. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. <laughs> Bye.